In this Q&A we're going to create a Pahoy Hoy lava effect. It's basically a kind of crusty lava encasing that's going to be situated in this uh, in this viewport here. So opening the lava blob start max scene which is included with the magazine you need to make sure that any file unit uh, changes are accepted on loading. It's a little box that will pop up here uh, just to make sure that we are working with the same unit setup so whatever values are dial in here uh, you'll get exactly the same results. Okay so what we've got a few um, items in the scene here so let's have a quick look at what we've got. So we've got two plain primitives, one which is this ground gravel there which is simply just a, a, a raised plain primitive which is slightly higher than this other guy which is plain 01 and what we have is a couple of materials assigned to these guys and you can't see them here at the moment quite simply because we've got scan line used in the material editor and metal ray used for the actual main production renderer. So if I just quickly lock those you'll see them update. So we've got this uh, pro materials for this guy and pro materials for this guy. The reason being uh, you can't see them in scanline is because they are metal ray only shaders. So if we just quickly render this scene, just drag that across there, it'll go through the final gather map and then just chuck it out. You'll see some uh, macro repeats in the texture here, we're not too concerned about that because um, we're just mainly concentrating on the displacement effect. Okay, so I'm going to quickly just change that back so we're just using the scanline renderer within the uh, material editor so it updates faster. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to um, add in a displacement for this plane 01 object here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create these kind of displacements that are going to peek through up and over this ground gravel object. Uh, so we don't see the actual base, the, on the uh, non-displaced areas which are going to be situated down here and the we're just going to see the displaced areas which are going to pop through over the top of this geometry here. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is select the plane 01 primitive. I'm just going to drag that out there so we've got more real estate over here and I'm going to add in a displace modifier in there. Okay, so the next thing I want to do before I actually start dialing in any strength values or dropping any maps or anything, I'm going to set up our base map, our map that we're going to use to displace and that's going to be initially an output map which is all the way down here which is this guy here. Now the reason I'm using an output map uh, well we're going to use a sub map within this map slot here, we're going to use an output map first so we can control the uh, distribution of color a lot kind of easier by using this color map across here. Um, reason being is because the map we're going to use which is a planet map, this guy there, it doesn't actually have an output map. In this particular version I'm actually using Max 2009. Uh, further versions or um, new versions in the future might actually have them uh, but in this particular version we don't actually have one so what we're going to do now is just instance that which is basically the output map because we're at this particular level all the way across to this map slot and I'm going to increase this strength value to about 125. So it's going to raise it up. So if I just maximize this guy and then drag that back a second, you can start seeing the effect that we're trying to produce, like this um, geometry that's peeking through the ground plane here. Um, we might get some bits kind of sticking through, maybe the odd kind of patch around here and so on and so on. Uh, don't worry about that. It's, this is literally just a case of it's a you know it's a Q and A. It's not a production quality uh, uh, finished results. It's a it's a it's a methodology. So therefore, um, what we can do actually, if you want to get want to use this in production, use a gradient to kind of control this or a mass to control the the growth and the distribution as well. So for that, you'd nest this within a mask map. Okay. So next thing I want to do. I'm just going to switch back to the camera viewport is we'll start going through and designing this planet map. So the reason we're using this particular type of map is because we have a fair amount of swatch controls here and also the 
distribution of shape, the actual shape that this map produces, is quite um, it's quite convenient for us for this particular example. Uh, a noise would be more kind of irregular, um, wouldn't be as more you know, natural, so to speak. Uh, same kind of deal with smoke or some of the specular or stucco maps. So therefore, as this gives us a lot of kind of control within here, uh, we can design our distribution accordingly. So the way we're going to do it is that we want all of these areas, I've just switched to the front viewport, um, everything underneath here to be not displaced and that is literally going to be setting these watercolors here. So if I'm just going to pull this color selector across, I'm just going to zero all of these out and then just copy that across. So you can see in the viewport now things are starting to drop down. Quite simply because this map here, this is all starting to become black. At this particular stage what I think I'll do is increase the amount of geometry within this plane so we can start seeing some nicer contours. Now I'm going to set this to around about, let's set that to about 200 for the length of the width, set, width segments even. Um, we will need to increase the amount when it comes to render time or you can basically use this density value in here. We'll set the continent value to let's say about 300. Okay, so we start seeing a little bit more information in here. However, we need to reference back to our viewport as well, uh, quite simply because what we're getting here is not a representation of what we're getting over this particular point. Now, at this particular time, you can start seeing this um, detail that's occurring in here. We're getting these kind of nice little folds starting to kick in in here. Uh, this is basically because the luminance values within this land colours is kind of favourable at this particular time. It gives you a rough idea of the kind of thing that we're going to get. So what we need to do is create um, folds like this within our swatches. Now we don't need to use colours, we can just use um, luminous values or black and white values. So we need a light colour, uh, kind of like a mid-grey, a lighter colour still than this one, another mid-grey about the same as that, and then topping off with white or you know, almost close to white. So the first thing we'll do, I think we'll uh, amend this island factor value. And let's increase that up to three so we've got some more detail within the shot. So we've got this nicer kind of break up here. And then I'm going to take this ocean value down to about 50%. So we've got more um, geometry peeking through now. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is, I think I'll increase this island factor value. I'm just going to set that up to about a value of 3. So we've got some more detail within here and then I'm going to drop this ocean value down to about 50%. So that gives us some more um, geometry peeking through this ground terrain. Um, okay so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to set this luminance value. I'm actually going to enable this guy. So what's going to happen if you'll notice that suddenly just drops straight out quite simply because we are using black and white values so it will take um, the mid grayscale value as well basically a displacement strength of zero so we can actually have negative displacement and also positive displacement depending on what colors we are using. So we're using the black here so it's actually pushing the uh, the geometry further down in the scene. Uh, these guys are actually going to raise it through so then it will peek through. So we actually get more kind of um, nicer offset going on. Okay so the first thing we want to do is start setting some of these colors up. So I'm just going to pull this swatch value up here for this guy. So first thing I want to do is let's drop in, I'm going to switch across to the camera viewport actually as well. Close that so we can start seeing what, what's going on here. Um, okay so the first one I want to do, I want to set that to about a kind of a relatively highish value, say around about 185. So I'm going to kill that, kill that and then pull that up and start seeing this starting to peek through now. So 185 is going to be our kind of low end level. All right. So the next thing I want to do is get it to dip back down again. So because we've obviously got these values in here, I think what I'll do is I'll just kill all of these a second. So we can start seeing it build up. Okay, so this next value here, 
um, I think I'll, I'm going to set that to about a value about around, around about 150. So we can start to see that coming up, coming up, coming up. There we go. I think we'll just drop that to about there. Okay. And next one after that, we want to get it obviously to raise up even further. So we've got the kind of fold going in there to start with, and we need to bring it back out a little bit now. So the next swatch, which is this color six swatch, I'm going to bring that up to about 230. So again, this is starting to come up. Okay. And then the next one, again, same deal as before. We want to drop that back down again. So I'm going to copy that across to there. So it's coming back down again. But I want to just slightly increase it just to add a little bit more weight into it. All right. And then the final one, I'm going to set to almost white around about 240, 250 or something like that. So 243, that will do. So what we've got, if I just switch to perspective, we've got this kind of nice um, terrain, or mountains in essence, with it folding over. All right, so that's all well and good. However, we've got, we've got these kind of pretty harsh peaks going on here. So um, what we then need to do is just switch across and start adding some, some more uh, detail in here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crank these up to about 500 for each one. And then I'm just going to turn that off there. So now if I just make my lighting normal, what I can then do is start adding in some additional modifiers. So the first thing I want to do is add in a push modifier to expand the uh, the geometry out based on its normal direction. And this I think will stick it to around about 100 maybe actually not that far, take it down to maybe about 80. So we've got these pretty intense folds going on here. We can start seeing these creases, which are pretty cool. Uh, and then because it's a little bit on the harsh side, we can then take it down by simply relaxing the geometry. So to do that, I'm going to take off the boundary edges. I'm going to increase the relax value to one start seeing it working now and then increase the amount of iterations in here so we've got a nice smooth surface but we're still going to keep these folds within here and so yeah say about a value of 20 just to be neat okay so if I just switch to the perspective viewport and then just pull it around you'll be able to see these nice folds starting to come in. Now if you notice we've got a bit of a kind of a cap off around here. Now what you could do if you want to take this further is just simply do a selection area around about this top using the volume select just kind of cropped across there and then relax that bit at the top even further or even add in some additional noise if necessary. But we've got this nice kind of break up going on here. Now to add a little bit more control what we can do is go back to this um, output map and simply go through and amend the uh, uh, the uh, color map down here. So by enabling this guy it will take a little bit of time to update. So what I'm going to do I think is I'm going to turn off this relax and, relax and push and I'm going to take these length and width segments down to about 200 just to get some update speed in the viewport. I'll increase this, put that push back on don't want to have the relax on this too much because obviously there's less geometry to work with so we're not going to see as many folds as we did before to so smooth it out even more because we're using obviously less geometry. So I'm going to take that relax off but what I can do now is just make sure I've got this nice kind of pretty steep I mean we've got we've got a bit of an incline going on here we want a really kind of harsh steep um, fold going on here and we can also add in some extra detail as well into it by designing kind of a few uh, curves within this um, color map here. So first thing I want to do is I want to drop in an extra couple of points in here. So I'm going to drop one guy in there and then simply zero it out. So I'm going to drop that all the way down to zero there and I'll just round that off to about 0.3 just to be safe. So you can start seeing what's going on here. So if I, if I raise this up 
to start seeing what's happening here. So we've got these folds going on there. However, obviously, I want this nice kind of linear edge to it almost, with it bulging up like so. So zeroing that out. Zeroing that out sorry. Uh, then what I can do is just add in some additional detail in here. If you imagine this is like kind of like a cross section in essence of this of these folds. So I want a nice harsh jump straight up there. So I'm going to pull that across. Oh, let's grab that guy and then pull that across to there. So same kind of deal. I reckon this came up to about 0.3 and this is about 0.35 airplane going over if you can hear that. <laughs> um, so if I turn that on and off and start seeing the difference between the two. So we're getting rid of this kind of grad feel going up here. We've got a nice bulbous effect kicking in there. Then we just want to round it off a little bit just by adding in another point there. And this one, what I want to do is set it to about a midway across, about 0.5 there and maybe about 0.4 there, just kind of drop it down a touch. And then obviously we've got this final guy here, but obviously we don't want this to be linear and harsh at the top like I mentioned earlier. So we can simply just pull that across to there and that should help round things off a little bit at the top. Uh, same deal as before, what we want to make sure is we don't have any hard edges on here, so we want some smooth edging on there. So what I want to do is just change that to Beshe Corner and that should fix the majority of problems that we've got there. So I just want to make sure that that's pulled across to there like that, just to get rid of any hard edging around the surfaces around here. Okay, so last thing to do, put that relax back on and then turn this these values back up to 500. And there we go, we a nice bulbous lava effect. So if I just switch the lighting back and I'm just going to hit render, pull that across there and I've got these nice kind of folds going in here and a pretty cool organic shape effect just by using a couple of modifiers, well about three modifiers and a couple of maps. Now what obviously we can do now is we can animate the effect. The good thing about it is that because um, we've got this ocean percentage value here, we can actually animate this so that it grows and contracts depending on the value that we use. Now, the end result, it looks you know relatively good. However, the problems that we start getting is twofold. Number one is that you start, you may start getting the occasional little island, quite simply because of this island factor here, um, starting to peek through, just suddenly just erupts out of the ground. Um, the other thing is because the amount of uh, push and relaxing we've actually got, we've got a quite a, a high amount of iterations going on here, you might actually start seeing some rippling effects going on within the geometry. So therefore what you need to do is just be a little bit more careful uh, perhaps take this length and width segments down there um, not as you not use so much relax within there and then any refinement you want to do afterwards maybe add a mesh smooth or turbo smooth on top okay so hope this has been informative and I'll see you next time thanks a lot